<laughs> it's an Archeo Death publication launch. Greetings Archeo Deathlings, it is I, Professor of Archaeology Howard Williams, in this video introducing a brand new open access academic publication, the Offers Dyke Journal 4 for 2022. And it's a special issue for this year on the theme of the borders of early medieval Britain. And in this video, I'm going to introduce the Office Dyke Journal and then introduce the contents of Volume 4. First off, let me introduce the Office Dyke Journal. So the idea was to produce a open access peer reviewed journal that uh, showcased new research on across disciplines on frontiers, borderlands and linear earthworks with a particular focus on Western Britain, on the Anglo-Welsh borderlands, but potentially incorporating comparative content looking across the globe, across Europe and across these islands, allowing new insights and new perspectives on these often enigmatic and poorly dated linear earthworks and the frontier zones in which they operate and are situated. The potential is also that while there's a focus on the early Middle Ages, for the journal to include comparative content from later prehistory, the Roman and ancient world more broadly, um, the later Middle Ages and the modern and contemporary eras. So funded by the University of Chester and the Offers Dyke Association, the first issue was published online by JAS Archeoliga uh, in 2019 and with the paperback edition made available via Archeopress. So you can purchase it or you can download it for free. Volume one for 2019 contained a solid range of seven articles, uh, an introduction by myself and uh, doctoral researcher Liam, Liam Delaney, who co-edited the first edition, um, the a republication of an existing piece revised and updated by historian Anne Williams, Offers Dyke, the stuff that mean, dreams are made of. Um, a republication again, this time by Margaret Worthington Hill with a paper called What's Dyke, an Archaeological and Historical Enigma. The an interim new research on excavations at Chirk and Erthig by Clwyd Powys Archaeological Trust, um, here published by Paul Del Belford. Um, with a paper titled Hidden Earthworks Excavation and Protection of Offers and Watts Dykes. Andy Seaman presenting a new insights into Clowark Hens Dyke, uh, Place and Narrative in Early Medieval Wales. Astrid Tumashite and Frauke Vita um, presenting their interim results from new excavations at the Danaverka with a paper called the Danaverka, Preliminary Results of New Excavations 2010 to 2014 at the Defensive System on the German Danish borderland and finally John G. Swagger publishing Making Earthworks Visible the example of the Oswestry Heritage Comics talking about how we visualize um, linear earthworks in borderland landscapes. The pandemic hit but we still produced the volume two within the year it is set to appear uh, for 2020 and this time we have another further seven articles an introduction um, and extended essay by myself on collaboratory coronavirus and the colonial countryside, a new original research paper by Mark Bell, who is author of the book called The Archaeology of Dykes, um, two chimeras in the landscape uh, using case studies of the history of research into early medieval linear earthworks, Keith Fitzpatrick Matthews, uh, extending and evaluating his earlier blog post on uh, the critiquing pseudo-archaeology for Offers Dyke called The Wall of Severus, Pseudo-Archaeology in the Western Mercian Dykes. Then a new research paper by Ethan Doyle White called Saxon Kent versus Roman London, presenting borderland heritage at the Faston Ditch in Joydens Wood, Kent, looking at the heritage interpretation of a linear earthwork that may have originally been early medieval. Then we have Living After Offer, Place Names and Social Memory in the Welsh Marches by myself, exploring how street names, road names and other place names help to presence the fragmented linear earthworks of Wattsdyke and Offersdyke in the Welsh Marches. Then we have a republication of the, the sadly late David Hill, um, Offers and Wattsdyke, um, bringing it, uh, new images and new mapping 
to his existing text and updating his existing text in places um, to bring his ideas to a broader and new audience. And another republication, Grimm's Ditch, One's Dyke and the Ancient Highways of England, Linear Monuments and Political Control by Tim Malin. So these first two volumes really combine uh, the republication and reformatting and sometimes updating of ex four existing articles that appear in sundry locations, but bringing them together in one place, as well as in each volume, brand new research by a range of scholars looking at the archaeology and heritage of linear earthworks and border land and frontier landscapes. Now, with the ongoing COVID pandemic conditions, we still managed to get Offers Dyke Journal three hours um, under the wire. And again, as with volumes one and two, this was co-edited by myself and doctoral researcher Liam Delaney. And the table of contents is slightly larger here, as well as I, an introduction my, by myself uh, looking at uh, researching linear monuments in 2021 called Collaboratory Through Crises um, and the which crises you can read about um, uh, in, in that paper. We have a republication by Paolo Squatriti of his paper, Patrons, Landscape and Potlatch, Early Medieval Linear Earthworks in Britain and Bulgaria. Uh, a multi-author new evaluation of Offersdyke called Offersdyke, A Continuing Journey of Discover, Discovery by Keith Ray, Ray Bailey, Tim Copeland, Tidir Davis, Liam Delaney, Dick Finch, Nar Heaton, John Hoyle and Simon Madison. Um, Doctor researcher and co-editor Liam Delaney publishes his paper on utilising LIDAR survey to locate and evaluate Offers Dyke, identifying a whole, whole, whole new host of locations where Offers Dyke existed. We have um, um, a research by David A. Humphreys called Offers Dyke in the Landscape, Comparative Size and Topographical Disposition as Indicators of Function. So he looks at Offers Dyke in comparative context. Um, an interim report on a brand new project by Nikki Garland, Barney Harris, Tom Moore and Andrew Reynolds, exploring linear earthworks as time and across time and space, introducing the monumentality and landscape linear earthworks in Britain project. And then three papers, including myself. Firstly, I single author a piece called Rethinking What's Dyke, a monument's flow in a hydraulic frontier zone. And then two, two co-authored pieces with John G. Swagger, the What's What's Dyke Wrexham Comic Heritage Trail. We published what we've put on also uploaded to the Office Dyke Collaboratory blog, namely a 10 panel comic with maps to help guide you as to where you can see What's Dyke in the Wrexham city landscape and environs and to think about its various interactions with the history of the region. And then a reflective paper on that uh, comic heritage trail, drawing the line, what's what's dyke, practice and process, and lead authored by John in that case. But we're here to talk about the launch of volume four, which is just out and is accessible for download online via the JAS website. And volume four is different because it is a special issue um, on the theme of borders in early medieval Britain and it's lead edited by Cardiff University's Dr Ben Guy, as well as um, edited by myself and Liam Delaney, as with the previous volumes. And the theme allows us to explore for the proceedings, select proceedings, of a 2020 uh, conference held at the University of Cambridge and organised by Dr Ben Guy, and the results are nine Articles. So we had seven articles in volume one, seven in volume two, nine in volume three, and again nine in volume four. Um, so we start off with Borders in Early Medieval Britain, introducing the special issue by Ben Guy, an introductory synthesis and reflection by Lindy e. Brady called The Fluidity of Borders, Bigger Haven, uh, an introdu introduction to money trade and cross border traffic. Rory Naismith takes us on a journey across. Uh, the history and archaeology and numismatics of borderlands in the early Middle Ages. Donation and conquest, the formation of Lothian and the origins of the Anglo-Scottish border by Neil McGugan takes us on this uh, uh, critical evaluation of when the English-Scottish border fossilised, actually didn't fossilise, but how the zone emerged during the early Middle Ages. Um, a place name specialist, an eminent scholar, um, Oliver Padel, uh, addresses King Ethelstan and Cornwall, 
Ben Guy himself has a paper called The Changing Approaches of English Kings to Wales in the 10th and 11th centuries. Place name specialist David Parsons brings place names and authors dyke, the limits of inference. Keith Ray, uh, the organisation of the mid-late Anglo-Saxon borderland with Wales, puts Offers Dyke in its landscape context. And finally, Rachel Swallow um, writes, shifting border, shifting interpretations, what the Anglo-Norman castle of Doddleston in Chester might be trying to tell us about the 11th century northern Anglo-Welsh border. So not only can you download the individual um, publications, you can download the entire uh, edition for looking through and reading as a PDF um, in an attractive, traditional format, but fully available online. And as I said before, as well as being able to read online via JAS Archaeologia, you have access to the Offers Like Collection online through the Archeo Press website. Um, but in addition to that, um, we have um, the Offers Dyke Journal 1 to 4 available for purchase. And the paperback issue of Volume 4 is out imminently in this month and is all the content is here and obviously links to my other publications with Archeo Press, including Volumes 1 to 3 as well. So I'm very pleased and delighted to have collaborated with Liam over four issues and for volume four with Dr. Ben Guy to have worked with so many ex excellent authors with really supportive international peer reviewers with an amazing and insightful editorial board supported by the Office Dyke Association and the University of Chester producing a journal that looks niche on first glance but actually addresses a key theme for studying early medieval history and archaeology and landscape as well as comparative studies reflecting on borders frontiers and linear monuments across the globe from prehistory to the present day now that's not all because already we've had a gamut of submissions for volume five for 2023 and I'm busy editing this with Liam Delaney, uh, sending out uh, submissions to peer reviewers and getting back and evaluating manuscripts and sending advice back to authors so that by the summer of 2023, volume five will be out online and again available uh, for purchase in paperback via Archeo Press. Um, then where do we go? Well, we'll see. But at the moment, we're going to finish off volume five and then take stock and perhaps start planning for future volumes, whether annually or on a different time scale. But already I'm I can say I'm pleased, proud. And uh, I think it's been a successful publication enterprise to not only um, set up an open access journal that's free to authors and free to um, the reader, but to do so in a distinctive high quality format um, that cuts costs, gets around the many impediments of academic publishing while re retaining a high standard of content and evaluation by peers. So that's my video introducing and launching volume four. Um, so um, I hope that's of interest. And while I've done little more than read out the titles, I hope it whets your appetite for delving into not only volume four, but also the back issues of volumes one to three, the republished and represented uh, um, existing research of a number of authors, as well as exciting new insights and observations from across disciplines into linear earthworks, frontiers and borderlands. Follow Archeodeath on WordPress or you'll never learn.